soul cries out for you more and more, Heavenly Father. More of your presence, more of your power. We thank you, Lord, for your provision in our lives, but we, we cry out for more, Lord. More Holy Spirit. Your work is not done in our lives, in our communities, in our families. But Lord, use us. Guide us and direct us, we pray. Amen. Why don't you turn around and give somebody a high five, maybe a couple of people. Big high five. You take your seat. Say hello to somebody too. Don't just slap their hand. Welcome to our PM service. Isn't it great to be in the presence of God and celebrate what he's been doing in our week, in our lives? It's amazing. Welcome, my name is Justin. We use this time every service to connect with one another. So why don't you grab out your connection cards? They look a little like this. You'll find a pen also provided. Grab a hold of that. If you're visiting or new at Hope, welcome. It's so great to have you here. Please fill in your name and email and contact details. We'd love for you to use this form to connect with us. If you're regular, just fill in anything that's changed. Pop your name at the top. And of course, for all of us, we want to celebrate what God has been doing in our lives. So please fill out your prayers, praise, reports, and your prayer requests. Because together, we want to pray for one another. We want to uphold each other in prayer through the week. We pray over each and every one of these connection cards through the week. So as you're filling out yours, I'll fill out mine. While you continue to fill out the connection card, I just want to remind our church what it is that we try to achieve through Winterfest, which is connecting to our community. And what I love about connecting with our community is that we aren't just a church in a community, but we're a church of the community. And that's important because then we can be ambassadors. We can be connectors for God's kingdom. And so we have many different avenues for you to be able to serve at this great event, Winterfest. And it is on Saturday the 4th. So save the date. Come down and serve. You can be a face painter. You can get involved with kids' activities. You can help with cleaning up, packing up. You can help with ushering, whatever that might look like. Or maybe you just want some more information. There is a box for you to tick. Isn't that important to tick a box? It's fun to tick a box, so why don't you tick that box? And we'll serve our community together. Seeing God's light shine. In the same place that you found your connection card, you'll also find your tithes and offering envelope. It looks like this. We have three ways to give here at Hope. You can pop cash on the inside. You can give online like me and my family does. Or you can give after the service at our information desk with our lovely Ian. Whatever your means of giving today, I want to encourage us through Scripture. And I'm going to focus on Romans 12 again. But I love what it talks about. And it's that transformation work that God wants to do in our hearts and in our actions and in our words and in our attitudes. Everything about us is transformed by this renewing of the mind that it refers to. And I love how God takes our everyday lives and he uses it as praise and worship unto him. And that's what we're doing when we're actually giving into God's kingdom. He's transformed us, renewing our minds, changing the way we think. We're no longer conforming to the patterns of the world, which says, mind, mind, mind. And we say, God, you are worthy of honour. And this is our way of honouring God, which is giving into his kingdom. And so, why don't you grab a hold of your giving envelope? 
And let's stand and let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the work that you have begun in our lives to transform, change us, rearrange us, rearrange our thinking, our words, our attitudes, but also the way we do life, including our finances. We thank you for every opportunity it is to bring you glory and bring you praise. And we pray as we deposit this, this praise, this glory unto you, Lord, that it might be used for your plans and your purposes beyond these four walls into our community to see salvation. We thank you. And we all said, Amen. Let's praise and worship as we can. It was not a winter. We come back and it's cold. So I have to get all my winter jackets out and cardigans out. But tonight, um, just my message called the power, love, and a sound mind. It's from 2 Timothy 1, 3 to 7. 2 Timothy 1, 3 to 7. And this is something God really deposited in, in my own heart, in my spirit, in the last couple of months. As I was reading through the Second Timothy, First and Second Timothy, um, and I just want to share that encouragement God has deposited into my spirit, and I just really do believe that someone here tonight needs to hear the encouragement from God, needs to be reminded of that your amazing gift that God's giving to you, that needs to be stirred up and continue to be stirred up and used for His glory. So, two things my focus on the message today. The first one is to stir up your gift. But the second one is when fear comes, to replace our fear with God's power, with God's love, and sound mind, which is discipline, self-discipline. So if you'd like to go to 2 Timothy 1, 3 to 7 with me. This is a Paul writing this letter to his spiritual son, Timothy. It's actually at the, towards the end of his life, in a very cold dungeon in Rome, where he's been arrested. This is his second arrest. The first arrest was a home arrest in Rome. He was released a couple of years later. This is his second arrest. This time he knows he's not coming out of it. This time he knows death is waiting, just around the corner. And he's writing this letter as a spiritual father 
to Timothy, who is his spiritual son. This is like his final word to his spiritual son, encouraging, reminding him, stirring up, so the work of God can continue long after he's gone from here on earth. So 2 Timothy chapter 1, 3 to 7, this is encouragement to be faithful. So Timothy, this is NLT version. So Timothy, I thank God for you, the God I serve with a clear conscience, just as my ancestor did. Night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. I long to see you again, for I remember your tears as we parted, and I will be filled with joy when we are together again. I remember your genuine faith, for you shared the faith that first filled your grandmother Louise and your mother Eunice, and I know that same faith in you, strong in you. Verse 6. This is why I remind you to fan into frame. In New King James Version said, stir up. Okay. God gave you when I laid my hands on you. Verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. In other translations said, a sound mind. So as I say, this is the background of 2 Timothy. You know, when I read it through, this is what I was picturing. And we have been privileged to just travel through Ryan recently. We found where Paul was jailed. We didn't get to go in, but you know, you, you see in the pictures there's a very small like a hole, it looks like a, just a hole, it's entrance to the dungeon where he was kept. You know, while he's writing this letter in a cold dungeon, can you imagine super apostle Paul, who used to teach, preach, and go on the mission trip, always on, in a dungeon, writing letter to his spiritual son as his final words. And this is what I pictures. You know, this is one of the most I find personal and moving letters I find in the Bible. And, you know, it, it brings tears to my eyes sometimes when I read it through. And imagine what it would have been like for Paul to be writing this letter. Every word, recalling all the ministry he's done with Timothy. Every word recalling what Timothy meant to him. Not just a spiritual son, but he was also a friend. They did a ministry together. And Timothy was converted on a, on a Paul's first mission trip. And he joined Paul for second and third trip. They, they shared so much. And at that point, Timothy is caring for the people, uh, most likely in Ephesus, where the Paul left him there to assign him to look after God's people. So... The Bible actually indicates in some way, it, because it does talk about Timothy's tears, Timothy must have seen or somehow seen Paul be, being arrested and taken to Rome to be in prison. So this is the background of this letter. And as a last word of a super apostle, if I was in his place, I think I'll be writing a letter of complaint to my friends. <laughs> Can I be honest? I think I'll be telling them how cold it is to sit in a dungeon. I think I'll be complaining about the food is terrible if they are feeding him. I think I'll be complaining about the chains that is around me. But here, Paul using his God's giving gift to stir up Timothy's yeah. spiritual gift. So that the truth and the gospel, the good news of Jesus, will go beyond his own life and lead the next generation. And this is my prayer tonight. God gives us each and every one of us a gift. And sometimes we become so timid, we shrink back using it. And not fully understanding the gift is given by God for us, not for ourselves. I've been there, um, to be honest, so many times. I want to shrink back and I have not shrunk back and not wanting to do what God, I knew that God called me to do certain things. I didn't want to do it. Why? Because I was scared. I was a fearful, I was intimidated. And when I read through this passage that just only in the last couple of months, God really rebuked me. And at the same time, encouraged me. Yeah. And said, I didn't give you a gift for yourself. I didn't give you a gift for you to keep it and nurse it. I gave it to you so that you may bring many more to Jesus Christ. So this is the heart of Paul here. Paul encouraging Timothy for the strengthening of Timothy's faith. So may you be encouraged also tonight and may your faith be strengthened. You know, whatever you're going through right now, this is a reminder for you also to stir up 